Marvel 2099 started in 1992 at the height of the 1990s comic book hobby and now in the fourth quarter of 2019 we're about to see that world explored once again. So today we're taking a look at the history and the origin of the 2099 world itself. Whether it's nostalgia from a first read through with the youthful days of the 90s or you're unfamiliar with this part of the Marvel Universe, this should be everything that you need to know. Before we begin I want to thank you for watching JLS Comics whether you're back for more or it's your first time here. Don't forget to share this and subscribe so you don't miss all of our videos we make each week just like this. Alright, let's jump into our tale of 2099. The idea began with Stan Lee. Stan and John Byrne were creating a story called World of Tomorrow for the graphic novel line about a lawman from the future named Ravage. It didn't work out, but according to Marvel Age number 117, Stan was adamant about portraying the Marvel Universe for the future. So they got a bunch of guys together and came up with an idea and built it from that one book, that one name, that one story into an entire world. Marvel's editor-in-chief, a guy named Tom DeFell, Falco had just brought in a guy they plucked from DC Comics ranks named Joey Cavallari to head this new imprint. Joey had seen what happened with Jim Shooter's new universe, so his idea was the opposite. To roll out this new, well, new, newer universe over multiple books and months. Release it in waves, not all at once is what he said. So that it grew from that one title to an entirely new line, an imprint, which would have been 100 years from when it was launched, 2093. But I guess 2099 sounded cooler because that became the name of the line. The first glimpse we got of the new line was in what was Marvel's most popular title at the time, Amazing Spider-Man in issue 365 gave a big preview complete with a poster spread in the middle of the issue. At first, we were introduced to Spider-Man 2099, Doom, Punisher, and then shortly thereafter, Ravage 2099 came out. Ravage was the first non-legacy character, meaning he was brand new for this, out of Stan Lee's idea. The line was widely popular, with Spider-Man 2099 being the most popular of the group, so the line then expanded to 2099 Unlimited, with titles like Hulk 2099, Ghost Rider 2099, and X-Men 2099. But what is this world? The 2099 world is a dystopian world like the world of Judge Dredd, Blade Runner, Akira. It's cyberpunk, futuristic world with these mega cities run by mega conglomerates like Alchemax. It's a possible future of the Earth 616 universe, the main Marvel universe. It's a splinter universe that branches off directly from 616. Heroes have died out, become the stuff of legends and religion and myths. The age of heroes told through story whispered in the gritty streets of this new reality. The ruler was not traditional religion or president or a king, it was Alchemax, Avatar, and the Church of Thor. A catastrophic, human-made cataclysm had seen to that evolution in society. It was a massive battle between humans and mutants, and it gave rise to the corporation's hostile socio-political takeover. In the great purge that followed, death camps and internment centers were quickly set up to corral, control, and destroy the mutants. So they appeared to have died out, but they disappeared and they formed an underground network. And as war and terrorism rendered most of the U.S. inhabitable, people consolidated in these alchemex controlled megacities for many years. In 2076, eco Terrorists and the pollution wars blew up the fault lines of California, which caused it to become its own Snake Plissken like territory, and the world was lost until 2099. Alchemax had their hands in everything weapons, advanced tech, RD, biopharmaceuticals, the drug trade. Alchemax was the sole supplier of a highly addictive product called Rapture. An Alchemax scientist named Miguel O'Hara was working in a genetics lab, and his DNA ended up bonding with that of a spider, and so he became Spider Man. 2099, a hero to the citizens of Nueva York, as he stood up against Alchemax. Alchemax had their own private army, a police force called the Public Eye, and one such officer was a man named Jake Gallows. Jake found an old war journal of Frank Castle's and took up the moniker of Punisher. In the megacity that arose over Chicago and Detroit, a man named Zero became Ghost Rider. In 2099 Unlimited, and an escape from New York, California region, John Eisenhart rose up as Hulk 2099. Cheyenne led the new incarnation of the X-Men, the head of Alchemex's anti-pollution division, Paul Philip Ravage, became Ravage 2099. And then a man rose up as Doctor Doom, ultimately becoming POTUS for a time. The line was doing very well, and so in 1994, they decided to do a line-wide event called the Fall of the Hammer. In something out of Battle Angel Alita, Alchemex built a floating city called Valhalla, where all the wealthy, worthy worshippers went. Nice alliteration there, right? To continue with the comparison, Alchemex employees became versions of the Norse gods, archetypes of Asgardian legends. He wanted to capitalize on the Thorite movement and quell the uprising of upstarts at the same time via Project Acer. 
Jordan Boone, now called Halloween Jack, by the way, was Loki. Tiana from Ravage's anti-pollution division became Hela. Cecil McAdams, reverend for the Church of Thor, became Thor. And Doom was president. A fake Captain America took on Doom and became ruler of America. And in the winter of 1995, Warren Ellis killed off most of this universe in 2099 AD Apocalypse. It was a one-shot meant to wind down the built-up world. The AD, of course, meaning after Doom. Then came another one-shot called AD Genesis, and subsequently the X Nation and Fantastic Four 2099. In 1996, the entire line was consolidated down to the original idea, one title, which combined all the characters whose book's premature cancellation left plot threads unthreaded. The book was called 2099 World of Tomorrow. In 1998, the line ended with a one-shot issue entitled 2099 Manifest Destiny, which found Steve Rogers finding Thor's hammer to become Thor himself, although Spider-Man 2099 ends up with it at the end, a worthy wielder of a thousand years. And that was pretty much it until the Exiles met up with future Spidey for a couple issues. But why did this happen? In 1996, the comic book hobby was at a critically low point and Marvel was suffering severely. It was around this time that their own distribution company collapsed. Fans and non-fan investors alike left the hobby en masse and Marvel was at a point where Chapter 11 bankruptcy would force a buyout from corporate raiders at a bottom basement price. Marvel let tons of staff go and cut titles line-wide, sales were flat, so a financial shot in the arm like the Marvel DC crossover, DC vs. Marvel, Heroes Reborn, the emergence of villains like Onslaught, they all happened around the same time. Short-term money was part of the strategy and the other was cutting costs, so many of the 2099 creative staff either were let go or quit. There were writers from talks about revamps, new intros and the like. For example, Grant Morrison and Mark Miller wanted to bring in Daredevil, Captain America 2099, and Iron Man as a new 2099 Armored Avenger, but that all fell through. And since then, Marvel's periodically revisited the line. Like in 2004, Robert Kirkman brought out Marvel Knights 2099, which was Daredevil, Black Panther, and Humans, Punisher, and Mutant 2099. But what's different here is that the Marvel Knights world takes place on a world separate from the original 2099 world. Kashamba rose up as Black Panther. The daredevil in this world is Samuel Fisk, Wilson Fisk's grandson. And then we get the daughter of Elektra in Frank Castle, Cassandra, who becomes Punisher 2099. In 2006, Marvel updated the designation, so Marvel 2099 is now Earth 928, and the Marvel Knights 2099 is now Earth 2992. And this was to clarify that these two 2099 worlds are different places. In 2013, the Marvel Universe was engaged in Age of Ultron, which is a massive event that saw the genocide of millions and the planet becoming part of an Ultron super network. They decided to go Terminator and go to the past to kill Hank Pym, the man who originally created Ultron. The man for the job was Wolverine. Well, Wolverine's time traveling actually messed up the space-time continuum and all of reality was affected. All Earth variations, including that of Earth 2099. Miguel O'Hara found himself trapped in the Spider-Verse, trapped in Earth 616 of the days of yore before the cataclysm which altered the future. It was here that Earth 928 became an alternate future rather than a definitive future, sort of like Days of Future Past is altered by events in the present. The events of the 2099 universe were altered. A new divergence happened in that time-space point in time, giving us another version of Miguel, another version of Spider-Man 2099, the one we've had since the event occurred. It carried through Dan Slott's Superior Spider-Man run. In 2015, when the incursions collapsed the Marvel Universe down to one singular battle world, ruled over by God Doom, the 2099 universe became a portion of the map, surrounded by water, surrounded by Killville, Sentinel Territories, and the Monarchy of M. In 2016, in Deadpool issue number 6, we got to see a Deadpool 2099. A female Deadpool, Wade Wilson's daughter, Warda, who took up the mantle in the year 2099. Though they didn't have their own comic books, there's been plenty of other characters who have been 2099, like Iron Fist, Thor, Moon Knight, Black Widow, Mark Hazard, Iron Man, Captain America, and others. In November of 2019, a new Marvel event will be firing up once more, written by Warren Ellis. The event will give us 2099 versions of Conan, Venom, and a ton of other characters. It's Marvel's 80th anniversary, and the year 2099 is 80 years in the future, so it's a perfect time for a new 2099 tale. And that's the 2099 universe, my friends, in a brief amount of time. They were fun, exciting, and fresh takes on some 90s extreme. Spider-Man 2099 is still my favorite from this line, and is, as, of course, he's the favorite of Eddie, and I'm excited to see what the future holds for him and for this world. That's it, my friends, for this one. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, corrections, and suggestions down below. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be part of all of our videos new and old. I am Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.